It is a gorgeous Wednesday evening here in New York City at Yankee Stadium. We got a baseball game, and that man will be pitching for the Bombers. And Al Light is going to need four of those for the kids in the Lighter household. As Kia Motors presents the Wednesday game of the week tonight, it's the defending world champion New York Yankees against the Seattle Mariners in the middle game of a three game set from Yankee Stadium in the Bronx, New York. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Yankees Baseball along with Al Leiter. I'm Michael Kay. Yankees lost last night. Cliff Lee was great. Yankees starter Phil Yu struggled. And now you wonder, did Phil Yu struggle because they skipped him over that start to try to start the innings limit? I, I think that could be a little bit, you know, where he was rusty in a sense. But look, it was only one start. And I think if this is all about Phil Hughes figuring out a way to keep his innings down, they have to find spots for him to not get the innings up to where it meant to be. Seven runs. You're right, Michael. He was off. Not only was he off with his command, frankly, Gutierrez got a home run here. He ended up giving up seven runs. But his velocity was off a little bit. Even even though his arm slot may have been dropped a little bit, certainly a disappointing start, but still, so far, Phil Hughes is having a heck of a year. All right, let's look now at tonight's New York Lottery pitching matchup. Pretty good matchup. Javier Vasquez goes for the Yankees, 6-6, six 5.16, and, six, and Felix Hernandez is going to go for the Mariners, 5-5, five five, 3.28. Let's examine them both, and I'll start off with King Felix. King Felix is a front-end starter in Major League Baseball. He's fifth in the American League in strikeouts, and what I like about him is he throws a changeup to right-handers and left-handers. He will throw a fastball anywhere from 90 to 100 miles an hour. He's got a great curveball, great slider. Truly a four-pitch pitcher. And he's unpredictable in the sense that he'll throw any pitch at any time. The Yankee hitters have their hands full tonight. Now with Javi Vasquez. I, he's pitched much better of late, certainly better than the first two months. His month of June, he's 3-1. and one. But against Arizona last week, he ended up giving up four runs. He got a no decision, eventual Yankee win in 10 innings. They beat the Arizona D-backs in 10 innings with a 6-5 win. I think it's a matter of him being aggressive with his fastball. When he's got his put-away breaking ball down the zone, he's quality. Well, I'd like to have some offensive support. Nick Swisher was great yesterday. In fact, he's had an outstanding year for the Yankees so far. When we get back on segment two, we examine what it means to be Swisherlicious. consistently outstanding all year has been Nick Swisher. Last year he had that great start, came back down to earth and also struggled in the postseason, but yesterday two home runs, he's been doing very well. Yeah, he certainly has. And talking to Kevin Long, it really goes back to last offseason when he, his postseason numbers were 127. He worked hard over the winter in Arizona with Kevin Long. Yesterday, his 12th and 13th home run solos off a very tough pitcher in Cliff Lee. How about this? Seven home runs at Yankee Stadium this year through 33 games. He had eight all last year. He's comfortable at his, uh, in his stance. He's balanced. He's having a heck of a year. Now let's see what these guys have done against King Felix. Felix Hernandez. Swisher has six hits, three of them home runs. Teixeira hitting 306, also three home runs. And Robbie Cano, he hits everybody. Five for 13 against Felix Hernandez with a home run. He's hitting 385. The opposite opponent for King Felix is Javier Vasquez. And we get back. Lineups, first pitch, baseball. Coming up next, right here on Yes.
curve. And by IOTV. IOTV offers you incredible HD picture and sound. HD is free with IOTV. Looks like it's going to be a little bit of a cloudy night, but the weather has been great here in New York City. Another big crowd making its way into Yankee Stadium. The Yankees have taken the field. Javi Vasquez taking his warm-ups, and we're taking a look at the Mariners' starting lineup, which is presented by Lexus. Ichiro Suzuki in right field leads off. Batting second and playing second, Sean Figgins. Russell Brangin at first base will hit third. Cleaning up and DHing Milton Bradley. Jose Lopez, the third baseman, will bat fifth. Batting sixth and playing center field, Franklin Gutierrez. Jack Wilson at shortstop, bat seventh. Batting eighth and catching Rob Johnson. And Michael Saunders is in left field, and he is going to bat ninth. And on the mound for the Yankees, 33-year-old Javier Vasquez will be making his 14th start, 399th career start. Six and six, better in June, three and one in June. 75 innings, good, still hit to innings ratio. Let's take a look at the pitcher's scatter report. I mentioned a good June, 174 batting average against. I said the three and one with a three year array after a bad first two months. Getting support, not only run support, almost five runs per nine, but no errors behind him. And keep it consistent, at least 10 wins and 150 strikeouts in each of his last 10 seasons during the 2000s. Well, Vasquez is ready. So is Ichiro Suzuki. And let's do it here in the Bronx as the veteran right-hander deals. That one is swung on and driven to right field. Nick Swisher battling the sun, drifts back and makes the play for the first out. Let's take a look at the Yankees defense, which is brought to you by Mercedes. In the outfield, Curtis Granderson, you just saw Swisher, that's left to right. Infield, A-Rod Jeter, Cano and Teixeira, third to first. Cervelli behind the plate and Javi Vasquez is on the mound. You know what we saw from Ichiro right there? Sometimes he sits on a pitch and tries that home run to lead off the game, and that's what he's trying to do. You know, we were talking about it yesterday. I, I think Ichiro, if he wants to hit 15, 20 home runs a year, he can. Certainly a great hitter, spray hitter. But, yeah, I think that, I think that as well. Just try to spin on that. Pitch to Figgins is outside. Sean Figgins, the big free agent signed for the Mariners. A disappointing year so far. Certainly offensively, they're in the bottom of each category. Popped up, giving chase is A-Rod, but he'll run out of room. Figgins has at least one stolen base in each of his last six games. And only three other active players have had a stolen base streak as long as Figgins at any point during their career. Carl Crawford, nine games in a row. Corey Patterson, nine in a row. And Jose Reyes, six. He did it twice in 05 and 07. Foul back. Struggled early on, Michael, and certainly with on-base percentage. You mentioned about a guy who steals a lot of bases. It, I, I think part of his struggle was that, you know, he's trying to justify a, a nice contract. He got a four-year deal this winter for $36 million and uh, comes over to a team and struggled offensively, and it just kind of spirals from there. Especially when you have an entire lineup that just really hasn't performed. And, you know, Sean Figgins is a nice player, but certainly not a guy that you'd say the go-to middle of the lineup guy. Figgins has been a disappointment. Look at the decrease in batting average. Fourth largest in the American League. The 1-2. One, 2-2. Two. Two and two. Figgins signed to a big money contract. Four years, $36 million. So he left the Angels to come to the Mariners and has not lived up to the money, the 2-2. Two -two. That one's driven out to left center field. Granderson got a good jump, and he runs it down for the second out. Let's look now at the game time weather conditions presented by Bigelow T. 78 degrees, humidity 25%, wind is 9 miles per hour, and it's a great night for baseball. Beautiful. 25% humidity, yes. Very low. Here's Russell Brannion. Second game with Seattle after being acquired from the Indians. Russell was with the uh, Mariners last year, left as a free agent. Well, this team desperately needs run producers, and they figure they can get some power out of Brannion. Now, 
was fouled away. And this stadium last year, he did something that no one has done since. He's the only one who's ever done it. He hit the facing of the Mohegan Sun Sports Bar out there in center field. No one has hit that yet. He didn't hit that pitch in the count one and two. You know, there are certain guys that, that you know, this is his second game, and, and watching the game yesterday, certainly Phil Hughes wasn't on, but you get an infusion of, of a middle lineup guy, and I, and I do think against right handers, he's got that imposing figure. But for him to have that presence, and, and even though Russell Brain is a nice player, 31 home runs last year, you mentioned Michael, you know, for him to come over in a team that's struggling, gets guys in position. You know, frankly, Gutierrez is batting third. They have nice players that were out of position in lineups, and I, and I think, you know, who knows how this month will play out for the Mariners, but certainly, you know, Brain is a nice pickup. Swing and a miss. So three home runs lifetime against Vasquez. Brannion strikes out. Mariners go down in order. And the Yankees coming to bat. About seven. First major league start for Colin Curtis and left, and Francisco Cervelli is going to bat ninth and catch. 24 year old Felix Hernandez would be making his 17th start. Quality pitcher for the American League and certainly for the Seattle Mariners. Kind of a 1A kind of situation with two aces with Cliff Lee last night. 105 strikeouts. He's fifth in the American League. Very nice hits to innings ratio. Let's take a look at the pitcher scout report. Well, I mentioned ace. How about this? The M's are 32 and 18 in game started by Hernandez. That goes back to the start of last year. Swing and miss stuff of his 26 strikeouts over his last three starts. 24 of them are swinging and security. They, well, he was rewarded by the Mariners giving him a five year deal this winter. Here's the captain, Derek Jeter, against King Felix. Swing and a miss. Well, that was a statement by the Mariners that they were not going to lose their developed pitcher that they had through their system. And they signed him to a five year, $78 million deal. Market deal, no bargain because they're a smaller market. And uh, they made the move, they were aggressive, and they locked up Felix Hernandez. A lot of people felt that he would be one of the most pursued free agents when he hit the market. The Mariners didn't want to deal with it. Well, you know, people forget sometimes when, when players get to the big leagues so young. He was the third youngest. Got to the big leagues at 19 years old. He's 24 years old. He's got five years in the big leagues. I mean, this kid is still, he's still a kid. Still learning on the job. You talk about learning on the job, Michael, just watching that first pitch to Derek Jeter, knowing that Derek will swing at first pitch fastballs through a first pitch of the game at changeup. And this is a guy that will throw a ball in the mid to upper 90s. But is the first pitch of a game when it's a changeup, is it effective? Because what are you changing up from? I, I never liked first pitch changeup, and that's a great point in question because uh, what exactly, if you throw 95 first pitch of the game, if you want to get a guy out with a changeup, throw a fastball either up and in, let him see it, feel it, or something off the plate, and then come back with the changeup. But his changeup is really that good. And I think it's special because of the velocity of being where it is and then to have a good changeup and use it. Bob Johnson, the home plate or catcher for the Mariners. Let's see if this is high enough. See how he, the catcher just kind of just kind of pulled it away a little bit, had to pull it back up. Home plate umpire Angel Hernandez saw it as a ball. And 
then Derek Jeter works a walk. Let's check out the Mariner defense, which is brought to you by Mercedes. This is the, uh, the same lineup they trotted out yesterday. Saunders, Gutierrez, and Ichiro. Right to left. Ichiro with nine straight gold gloves. A lot of hardware. Lopez, Wilson, Figgins, and Brandon, third to first. Rob Johnson behind the plate. And Felix Hernandez is on the mound. Here's Nick Swisher. Yesterday, two home runs against Cliff Lee. Swing and a miss. Well, I mentioned in the open, as we were highlighting Swisher and how comfortable he is, and just talking to Kevin Long, just. You know, that postseason bothered him enough to go to Arizona in the winter and work with Kevin Long, the hitting coach. I think the thing that really sent him out to Arizona, other than the plane, <laughs> was that he really struggled so much in the postseason. He just felt that because he was facing the best pitchers and the best teams, they exploited him. And he wanted to close up the holes that they were able to exploit. And so far, he's done that. Very quiet at the plate, keeping his head still. Not too many moving parts up there. Now, one year ago, he was at 237. Now, that's 237, right? After having a phenomenal April where he carried the team. And now 55 points more a season later. Not too bad. He's going to be in the argument. I don't know if he's going to get there, but he's going to be in the argument for the All-Star team. He's having that sort of first half. One, two. Swing and a miss. And Swisher down on strikes. You know, and a lot to be said for this game to be comfortable and be mentally where you need to be and not having gremlins and everything else talking in your head as to what you need to do. And I think even Swisher may have said this earlier in the year. When, when, when you're struggling, you try harder. The harder you try, the worse it gets. And, and it's really true. In baseball, certainly, maybe in everything in life. But, you know, very comfortable. Here's Mark Desherry as they average up to 230. He has a very strange hitting streak going on right now. He has a 10-game hitting streak, and during the 10 games, he has 11 hits. So a 10-game hitting streak, but he's hitting just 268. It's like a vitamin hitting streak, one a day. He's not really red hot right now, but he's picking up at least a hit a game. And then slowly he's inching that average up. Came into the season a 290 lifetime hitter. Don't know if he's going to get there this year. He's going to have to finish very strong to do that. Well, there's a strike. Well, Michael, hopefully he's not looking at it because, you know, all along we talk about, you know, historically in his career, he's always had a slow April and he tried different things last year. This year he, he went back to, uh, you know, his normal routine in the winter. You know, now when you struggle a couple months, it's more than just a, a slump. And if you keep looking at that batting average, it's only going to make it worse. Swing and a miss. As Teixeira strikes out for the second half. IOTV offers you incredible HD picture and sound. HD is free with IOTV, the official HD service provider of Yankees baseball on Yes. I mean, that's a very impressive changeup from Felix Hernandez. Already in this inning, he's thrown, I, I have him down for, for uh, five changeups. He's only thrown 13 pitches. You know, tough. You know, there's an unpredictable nature to guys with, with this kind of stuff where you got to honor his fastball, 95 or better, and he's going to throw his changeup, curveball, and slider. There's that fastball. Came in a low, swung on a miss. Here's a here's a changeup I'm talking about. Just the bottom drip dot drops out. You see, actually misses location. He's reading this unbelievable pitch. Now I think all major league players respect other ones, but when you see a great player like Teixeira walk back to the dugout, not the word unbelievable, that tells you what he thinks of the stuff. And I, and I think it's the nature of a great changeup for a guy. You know, we're not talking Jamie Moyer or a guy, you know, who relies on, on having to always change speeds. That one gets away from Johnson, and Jeter advances the seven. But watching early here, the Yankee hitters are, are trying to jump on the early fastball from, from a very tough pitcher. See a little slider. He's got the big curveball, kicks away to Johnson, trying to keep it in front of him. Wild pitch. That 
one gets away from Johnson as well. So Hernandez's stuff is so electric that the catcher can't handle it early here. Right. I'd be curious to see what they call here. This looks like a, a pass ball. He just planks it. You see his his wrist as a catcher kind of takes the pitch out of the zone. It's a boring sinker, and it's not just 91, 92. That's a 94 mile an hour sinker. They did pass ball. Pass ball. Count two and two on A Rod. Just missed. Count three and two. That is a close pitch to take. 107 strikeouts for Hernandez. Jared Weaver, the Angels, leading the American League. John Lester second. And then King Felix. Fifth to third. Couple of strikeouts. Three two. And A Rod works a walk. So two walks. Here in the first inning, it's been a no contact inning, two walks and two strikeouts. Yeah, now this is, I'm watching him, Michael. This uh, young pitcher, as great as he is, he's frustrated. He, he thought he missed a pitch uh, that Derek Jeter, uh, he called the ball down. Now he saw the previous pitch. That last one was definitely down to Alex, but maybe the pitch before. So far, Alex, uh, Alex uh, Angel Hernandez is not calling the low strike. Here's Robinson Cano leading the major leagues with a 358 average. Locked there by Johnson. Now Friday evening, Al, Vicente Padilla of the Dodgers plunked Robinson Cano. Later in the game, CC Sabathia then hit Vicente Padilla. Now is not going to say whether he did it on purpose, but he said it, he was upset when he hit Cano. He said, I've watched Padilla throughout his career when I was with the Indians. What he does when he starts, he takes the hottest hitter on the team and he always hits him. He said, after a while, it gets old. So that's just from studying. Robinson Cano now becomes a target because he's so hot. And that one's driven the other way. But CC said it does make it a different game, though, in the National League. He said, you can do that. You got to come up and hit. That's right. That is exactly right. I know over the years, you know, people uh, seeing Pedro Martinez going after guys, and you know, you have to be able to command the inside part of the plate. But there's also you, as a guy who's pitching on the staff, you have to protect your players. And if you think it's obvious, and you could tell, it, you know, if the game either is uh, is playing out to that, or you got a guy with better command than that. One on. Driven out in the left center field, giving Chase Saunders. He leaps and he makes the play. Saved a couple of runs right there and took an extra base hit away from Cano. No runs, no hits, no errors, and two men left on base. We played one, and only Michael Saunders' catch keeps it 0-0.
First ballot Hall of Famer. Are oh, you come kidding? On. Really? Do I even have to give out the number? <laughs> if that's not 100%, there's something wrong. Text your vote to 58772. Standard text messaging rates apply. One is yes. I'm not going to tell you what the second one is. That's brutal. Really? Are we trying? There's the pitch to Bradley. No, he's not going to be a first ballot. It'll be the sixth year of eligibility. Wow. Bradley fouls it back in the count 0 and 2. In fact, I want to see the, the writer from the BBWAA who does not vote him on the first ballot. Why would Ken Griffey Jr. not be a unanimous selection? Aren't there writers? There's that never been a unanimous selection. That one is driven deep to center field. Granderson back. He's still back. He's on the track. See ya. A long home run for Milton Bradley on an 0-2 pitch. And the Mariners lead 1-0. Wow. Change up down in the zone. Milton Bradley going into this game against Vasquez was 3 for 18, a 167 batting average. Looked like a pretty good pitch. Let's see where it ends up. Uh, a little bit higher than Vasquez would have liked. That's a change up that was, should have gone down and away. Good approach talking about these Mariner hitters have struggled yesterday. Milton Bradley had a couple of nice line drive hits there on the yes mo, hands out front. Pitsa Lopez is high 1 0. So Milton Bradley with his eighth home run. His last two starts, Vasquez did not allow a home run. Lopez rips one foul. Lopez has a 12 game hitting streak. Turning the season around, and along with mentioned Sean Figgins, a nice season last year, Lopez. 25 home runs for the Mariners. But he was playing second base, so he's obviously maybe moving over to third base. That almost hit Felix Hernandez on line drive, but maybe uh, moving over to third. Just getting comfortable there. He's played it before, but he'd been playing second base. What I didn't understand about that was Pickens had been a third baseman with the Angels, so why change both of their positions? They decided to go with Pickens at second. Well, it's a power position. The fact that Lopez had 25 home runs at second base, certainly Figgins doesn't possess that kind of power. You need some production at your third baseman. High fly ball, deep left, backing up Curtis. And he makes the play in front of the warning track for the first out. All going over scatter reports and saw Dave Island next to Joe Girardi. Each and every one of these hitters are to sit down with the starting pitcher and the catcher and go through each of the the strengths and weaknesses of every hitter. Now they're sending up Ryan Langerhans instead of Franklin Gutierrez, who is the starter and center, definitely in our opening lineup. And Langerhans lines that one into left center field, really dunks it in for a base hit. Unusual with any plays out there in the run, run it down. Well, the Yankees are changing it in their dugout as well. We did not hear Langerhans announced as a pinch hitter, but uh, he obviously was that. So Gutierrez started in center, and you take Gutierrez off your active players roster right now. There's a strike to Jack Wilson. Jack Wilson picked up from the Pirates along with Ian Snell who's in the minor leagues now with the Mariners and hasn't really filled the potential of what they envisioned for Jack Wilson at shortstop. He's had some knee trouble, spent some time on the disabled list. And really much of what the Mariners tried to do this this offseason was really the strength of what they thought would be a great starting rotation certainly with Cliff Lee and Felix Hernandez they have Eric Bedard coming back and just it really thought about defense improvement on the outfield covered a lot of ground at Safeco Field. But I think, of, you know, the balance, of course, you know, and it, you look at what the Red Sox tried to do also Michael with the addition of Cameron and Beltre and Scudero. You know, you, you have to have a fear. I always thought this as a pitcher. You, there's got to be a guy or two where you, where you kind of fear in the sense of, you know, where am I going to pitch? A, a game changer. 
you know, you look at the Mariners, they got a lot of nice players, but, you know, I don't really see that game changer hitter. Yes, Ichiro's a great hitter, and Milton Bradley's fine. You know, you have a lot of nice players. And I think that's been a lacking part of their lineup. You know, Al, they got so caught up that they made such great strides last year just with defense. And I think they thought that they could make more strides, but you have to be able to hit the ball and score runs to take advantage of defense. And I think their wires got crossed this year. And by the way, we did check uh, the tape from the first inning, and Gutierrez was in center field. So something obviously happened to him out there. So that's a loss for the Mariners because Gutierrez is a gold glove level center fielder. Home run, run yesterday's yeah. game, too. Good player. Foul back. Yeah, that, you know, I, and just thinking along with what the Mariners tried to achieve this winter, Jack Zarensic, a very aggressive new general manager for the Mariners, Don Wakamatsu there, the, the manager of the club. And, you know, how far do you go? You know, if you think, you know, pitching and defense is the way, the wave of, the, of Major League Baseball, you still have to have a guy or two that can thump and turn turn a game around with one pitch. And feared also. And I don't mean fear when you're afraid of them, but, you know, when you really respect, you know, the hitter in the lineup and, and you stop and you, you analyze the, the bats and figure out, you know, where can you go to, to make sure that, you know, he's not going to have some damage and, and game changer like an Alex Rodriguez, certainly, or Mark Desher. 2-2. Two, two. Well, you know what I think they got caught in? And, and teams that don't have the wherewithal to have the biggest budget in the world are looking for undervalued aspects of the game. And it started with Billy Bean and Moneyball. They felt that high on-base percentage guys were undervalued and that they could get important players for less money. Well, the Mariners then took it to the next metric, which is defense. Defense was undervalued. So they went that route and they acquired defense. They went out and they got a guy like Gutierrez. They felt that enough of the league still wasn't onto the defensive metrics and what they could mean to a team. But once that stuff becomes public out, I, I once asked Billy Bean, why did you let Moneyball be written? It kind of let all the secrets out of the bags. And those players now got paid a lot of money because they were high on base guys. Then the defense thing got out of the bag and now everybody's trying to get defense so they're not undervalued anymore. So you have to look for the next cheap thing. What is the next cheap thing? You don't know. Swing and a miss. Wilson down on strikes. Hey, stay tuned during the sixth inning for a message from our friends at the Fox Business Network. Just to, in line with what you're saying, Michael, the career on base percentage for, for the guys that we're, you know, we're talking basically. Figgins, Kochman was brought in, Milton Bradley. True professional hitters, good on base percentage. Figgins' uh, career on base is 363 uh, three, or 393 last year, or career wise. This year it's 237. Bradley's career is 371, it's 292. Uh, Kochman, who now is not going to be playing because now with Brandon here, his was 337. This year, 268. So when you gear your offense around guys that on base percentage, as Michael's saying, and they're not performing, where do you go? Shattered bat. <laughs> A-Rod running away from the bat as the ball is fouled. Well, every so often you hear kitchen. Well, this is in the kitchen. A big barrel. Now watch Alex run away from the barrel. A little spike on it. Dangerous. Ball boring in on Johnson. Check swing, did he go? Yes, he did, said Paul Schreiber. So Rob Johnson down on strikes. But the Mariners take the lead, one run on two hits, no errors, and one man left. The one big hit off the bat of Milton Bradley. No game plan there, just a home run. one nothing Seattle.
induce a lot of ground balls, a lot of double plays, um, can strike you out. Um, he's, you know, another one of the very talented young pitchers in baseball right now. Well, Joe's got that right, and that's what people think about Hernandez, and that's why the Mariners felt good coming into this year. You get Cliff Lee and you team him up with Hernandez, and you got two aces. I mean, it's hard to differentiate one and one A. They're both great pitchers, but it hasn't turned out that way. The pitchers have done their job. The rest of the team has. Third in the American League in ERA. I was talking to Rick Adair, and I also talked to Jackson Rensick about, you know, some scenarios. Everyone's talking about it's a, it's a foregone conclusion that Cliff Lee's going to get traded. You know, because you have the pitch, and now granted, they're, they're 15 back or they're 14 back, 14 games back. They're last in a, in a division with four teams behind the, the Texas Rangers and the Angels and the a Oakland A's. You know, the, he also mentioned, Jack Sorensi, that, yeah, we're getting Eric Bedard back, right. which was another guy when healthy another as a front-end side. guy. That's yeah. right. Uh, Doug Fister's been a nice find, certainly. Jason Vargas has really found himself. He's had a nice year. So, yes, they're getting good starting pitch. So the scenario I, I, I posed to Jack Zarensic was, you know, what happens if your club goes, you know, 22 and 8 in July? You make up seven or eight games. He said, look, you know, we would have to reassess at that time. And it's always the adage of anybody's available if you get the right players back. And what people don't realize about Jack Zarensic, and he's the GM of the Mariners, he's a scout by trade. You see the, uh, the AL West standings right there. And he's got a lot of great scouts working for him. They're not numbers crunchers. They're going to go and they're going to scout people and they're going to look and they're going to take out the stopwatch. They're going to do it like the old time um, guys. And if they don't trade Cliff Lee, they offer him arbitration and then Lee signs a big time contract. That one is lined into center field. And Saunders, who moved to center from left, makes the play. They have enough faith in themselves that they, they'll take those two first round draft picks. And I think they're going to turn them into good players. Do you really believe that? I think that they have a lot of faith in themselves. And they're not going to give Lee away. They're not going to give no, no. Lee away for, for middling prospects. They're going to give Lee away for great prospects. And if not, they'll create their own great prospects. I really truly believe they have that much faith in themselves as scouts. Well, and they, you know, mentioned Carmen Fusco, one of Jack Zarensic's advisors. There's no question about it. But, look, you're talking about the prize potential trade commodity come July 31 at Cliff Lee, uh, who's going to be a free agent. Yep. Uh, you know, probably will go somewhere else. You will lose You will lose him and you get a draft pick. i got to believe, Michael, that you're going to get three, four quality prospects that are close to big league ready than if you go out and, and go the amateur route. I, I, th I think you're right, and I think he will be dealt because I think there's so many teams that realize he's a difference maker. The difference between either making the playoffs or not or going deep in the playoffs. That one is driven deep to left, and Longer Hans runs it down for the second out. I, I think there's going to be seven or eight teams bidding for him, and Zared thinks going to be able to just pick and choose the best package. I think he's going to do very well with Lee. But I, I think it's I, I think it's really uh, great that you have a t guy who's willing to still you know make the move and mix and match. They, they traded for Russell Brandy and brought him in to, to solidify some middle of the lineup power. Not given up. Here's Colin Curtis. Curtis and uh, Francisco Cervelli actually went to Mount Sinai Hospital today to plead for a person to come forward for a possible match for a bone marrow transplant uh, to help uh, a little girl named Sofia Lopez, six months old. So if you're interested, you can go to www.getswabbed.org. Nice way for Colin and Francisco to spend their morning before the game. Just another part of a baseball player's life, and there's so many charitable endeavors by baseball players and professional athletes all over doing their part. Strike three. Colin Curtis is down looking. And the Yankees go down in order. One, two, three. We play two innings at the stadium. Javi Vasquez and the Yankees trailing one, nothing.
zeros across against King Felix. And Michael Saunders will lead off against Javi Vasquez. Saunders, the number nine batter. He swings at the first pitch and fouls it back. Third inning means it's time we check in with our very own Kimberly Jones. <laughs> Hi, Kimbo. Hey, Mike. <laughs> How are you? Great. How are you? It's a lovely night. It really is. And you look great as well. Thank you. Phil Hughes did not look great last night. And I thought that the manager of the Yankees was very blunt afterward, admitting that skipping over Phil in that innings limit thing might have had an effect on him. What did Phil Hughes say today? You know what his response was, Michael? You'll love this. He said, I'm not buying into it. He said, I'm not an excuse guy. He said, yeah, I was on my ninth day, but from the first pitch, I felt normal. I just didn't throw well. He said, every time this happens this season and I don't throw well, that one is driven deep to right field. Swisher back, turning, looking. See ya. A home run for Saunders, and it's 2 nothing Seattle. One of the good-looking young players for the Mariners. That's his sixth home run on the season. Only the 206 batting average. Gets what looks like a slider that spins middle of the plate. He drops the barrel of the bat on the ball. Certainly here at Yankee Stadium. Getting that ball in that right field area over the fence easily. Nice approach. Number six, the yes mo. Good swing, head down. The mistake slider from Javi Vasquez cost him two solo home runs. All right, so what was Phil saying there, um, Kim? He said, every time I don't pitch well when I am skipped, and it's going to happen again this season, Michael, he said, everyone's going to go to the extra rest. That's not necessarily the case. So no excuses from Phil Hughes. I think you at least have to respect that. I also respect the fact that he never brought it up at all, Kim, that he is really under the weather. He's not feeling well at all, and he refuses to use that as an excuse. Yeah, he's really battling a cold. He said, oh, this is nothing. He said, I did feel worse Monday and yesterday. He said, but that's not an excuse either. And, Al, how about this for you as a former pitcher? He said, as Ichiro grounds out, he said, you have to experience some adversity. He said, what fun is it if you never battle? He said, when you battle, that makes you appreciate it all the more when you go out there and have a great outing with your great stuff. And, by the way, he said, Said, I will get back to that you know, and soon. You know, Kim, but you, and you cover the club. Obviously, you're in the clubhouse often. Is This is typical. I mean, just listen. There are certain guys that will answer certain questions because it's that's how you're supposed to answer. I mean, is this typical of Phil Hughes? Is he beyond his years? Yeah, he's only 24. Now, Felix Hernandez is 24, too, so he's not completely rare in this. But Phil Hughes, standing at his locker today, answered questions from me, from anyone else who had them. That's who Phil Hughes is. He's been that way, as far as I've known him, in his Yankee career. And it's something that I think the writers respect about him. Now, CeCe Sabathia uh, is, is probably happy, or he's going to be happy, in about four hours. That one is tapped back to Vasquez as Figgins is retired. Because that's when the NBA deadline begins that you can actually talk to NBA free agents. Everybody thinks that CeCe is actually LeBron's agent. So what's going on with CeCe? <laughs> yeah, I asked him about this. He said, I can't wait till it's over, which, as you know, Michael's going to be another week or so. He said, because then everyone will stop asking me about it. He said, I'm going to find out when all of you do. Yes, he and LeBron are friends. He says he truly doesn't know where he's going, doesn't want to know at this point. And he says he doubts LeBron will check in with him during the process. Now, CeCe's also... Good friends with a potential free agent. That's Cliff Lee. And uh, what's the situation there? Is CC doing some recruiting? He is. And over dinner at Nobu, they had some sushi Monday night. Cliff Lee, Milton Bradley joined them, and CC talked. CC said it wasn't much about baseball, but they are very close. As we have a hit by the pitch. Yep, Russell Brannion will take first. And they are very close. In fact, CC credits Cliff Lee for helping him relax on the days he pitches. He said, I used to get more stressed out. Then I watched Cliff, who's as relaxed as can be. He usually sleeps till 6 o'clock on the couch on the day he pitches. The point being, they remain very close, although they didn't talk much baseball Monday night. I believe it wouldn't surprise any of the parties if the former Indians teammates or future teammates someday in the future. Well, they were back-to-back -back Cy Young Award winners for Cleveland. We'll talk to you uh, in the postgame. Uh, Kimberly, thank you. Sounds good, Michael. By the way, CeCe picked up the tab because he says, I always do. <laughs> and he also makes the most money. <laughs> <laughs> CeCe is nice a guy. Man. I mean, he, he's unbelievable. He's universally liked across all factions in the, in the clubhouse. And, I mean, he has really drawn this clubhouse together. He's just that sort of guy. He's like a Pied Piper type. Big teddy bear. That one is grounded softly toward third. Alex Rodriguez fields, fires across the diamond. 
And the guy who ate with CC at Nobu, uh, Milton Bradley, gets himself an infield single. Running off all that sushi. <laughs> Had to leg it out here. A little excuse me swing gets jammed. Alex Rodriguez making his best effort. Milton Bradley, plenty of speed, easily getting in. By the way, Gutierrez left the game with an upset stomach. So that's the word we get from the Mariners. Al, were you the pick up the tab guy when you played? Yep. Or was it Piazza? Was it Franco? No, please. I, I picked up the tab. All the time. And Piazza made more Some money. Some guys had alligator arms. So yeah, I, I, my, I always thought, you know, never ever would you allow a younger player to, uh, to pick up any tabs or pay their way. And uh, yeah, no, I, I, Johnny Franco was, was good as well. But I so was you're kind of intimating that Piazza had alligator arms. No, no, no. I'm saying some guys did. <laughs> <laughs> he did come up through the Dodgers with Tommy Lasorda as his manager, who was known to get a lot of free dinners. <laughs> Oh, you just made so many enemies with that one line. Count on one on bad. Lopez. Some people get free dinners. You get a lot of free dinners. Yeah. I'm cheap. That's why. Let's see the last, what, three or four dinners? They're free, right? That we've been out? But no, I treated you last time we went out. Remember you fought me on it? When we had lunch in Boston. At Joe's American, remember? Oh, yes, yes. Wow, what an animal. <laughs> Count one and two. <laughs> First and second, two outs. Count two and two. Although last time your friend Scott picked up a big deal. That, big. Was, nice. that yeah. was nice. Let's gonna bring him back up to New York. Gotta move him up here. <laughs> fastball, couple curveballs and a changeup. Let's see if he ele elevates with a high fastball there. This will be his 50th pitch of the night, the 2 2. Missed outside. So Jose Lopez has seen the whole arsenal in this at bat. Three, two count, couple fastballs, curveball, changeup, and slider. Not a good spot for Lopez. He's eight for 46. That's 174 with two outs and runners in scoring position. Right in on the hands, and he just fights it off and fouls it off. Well, that's it. You just said the numbers now. Ch swinging at a changeup, tough enough for a hitter to stay back and, and identify ball or strike, but those numbers would support a guy who's super aggressive, as he just showed there, that 174 batting average against two outs, runners in score position. And Javi Vasquez, knowing that, you got a guy who wants to get the RBI. Usually a hitter that'll swing at pitches out of the zone, as he just did. Three, two. Allen is lined over the leaping try of Jeter in the center field. Brandon scores. Bradley goes to third, an RBI single for Lopez, and it's three nothing Seattle. And you have to stop it right here because the guy on the mound is Felix Hernandez. You're not going to score that many runs off him. And Dave Island will go out and talk with Javi Vasquez. Well, it's a little fastball that ends up being up in the zone. He gets jammed enough, and I, I see where Derek. Leaps, oh boy, just out of the outstretched reach arm. Let's see how close it was on the Coors Light freeze cam. Freeze it. Mm. Mm. Very close. Two quick outs, a hits batsman by Russell Brannion. A little swing and bunt. Part of it, part of the game. Sometimes line drives are out, little bloopers. Keep making pitches as a pitcher. That has to be frustrating. It is. Although he did miss with his location on that pitch, and uh, Lopez just didn't hit it hard, but a flare over Jeter. Yeah, but also too, Michael, three two. He gave he gave his whole arsenal. You don't want to walk him. You got a guy who likes the swing. He did miss in the zone. 
Let's see how he jump. Mm. Well, he was trying to get up there with Cheetah. Hits the Langerhans is a strike. Different approach when you go in uh, Javi Vasquez along with Cervelli going through a scout report. Longer hands, obviously not in the lineup. Now he's added, inserted. Was one for four lifetime up until that last at bat. He first swung at the first pitch. Want to get on the same page? Know his weaknesses and strengths. All speed, way out in front, two and two. Through the changeup and then the backdoor curveball. Very nice pitch. Come back with something else off speed. If a guy, I always thought if a, if a hitter just looked like they were either overmatched or fooled enough to where you could stay, go to the well until they proved that they could hit it. I mentioned about going into a one for four. That one hit was a home run prior to his first at bat when he hit the base hit to left. Two, two. Three and two. Showing all off speed right here to Longer Hans. Curveballs, a couple curves, a couple change ups. See if he goes to the fastball or ends up going off speed here. Swing and a miss. And then off speed, and that'll do it. But Seattle gets two runs on three hits. No errors. Two men left. It started with Michael Saunders going yard. Right field. And at the end of it all, two and a half in, three nothing Seattle. more game against Seattle mark the starting time tomorrow it's 105 and then all three games against the Blue Jays over the weekend 105 on the 4th of July weekend and then the Yankees take to the coast three in Oakland and four in Seattle Francisco Cervelli will lead off pitches inside now the one o'clock game tomorrow our coverage on yes will begin at 1230 1230 out okay right in there got it Pitch outside, 2-0. Oh. Well, you mentioned it. You know, he's down by three runs. Certainly not insurmountable, but a tough pitcher. And Felix Hernandez, you got to figure out a way to chip away. Just 
push across a couple runs. Manufactured runs. center field. Saunders back. He has room. One out. Well, if there's ever a spot as a pitcher, you usually the outer outer third, outer half, you let a guy in a bad count, 3-1 count to see, a, see him hit a high fly ball to center field. Not that you direct it like a Nintendo game. Usually results in a fly ball to center. You ever played a Nintendo game and you were outlier? I don't think it was a Nintendo. What are the newer games? Like uh, e? MLB, uh, yeah, the, is it MLB, MLB 2K10? Yeah. I mean, yeah. is there an outlier? Yeah, game? Jack plays it. Yeah, how does Jack do his outlier? I think it's okay. I think I bur my uh, it burns out a little early. My stuff goes down quickly. Yeah. That's what Jack says. <laughs> Dad, you got good stuff, but it goes down quickly. I said, really? that was like how I pitched. Now, does, does the little... Uh, animated outlier have a good command on the game. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Yeah. That's a no game. three two counts. <laughs> Boy, it's the old uh, what I know now. How I would have done it differently. Isn't that funny though that, that your son Jack says that your stuff like, <laughs> falls off early? <laughs> no, hey, you know what? I thought it was pretty cool that you're in the game and your son can play it. Strike three, cheater down looking. Oh, Hernandez starting to deal. That is his uh, fourth strikeout. Well, he comes right after Derek and paints the inside corner. Can't do much about that. You just hope to fight it off at 94, 95 mile an hour fastball. Perfect pitch. That's going to bring up Nick Swisher. Grounded to first. Brannion Fields and the Yankees retired quickly. Three up and three down, seven in a row. Hernandez has retired. We go to the fourth.
one. Well, who are the other two? It's a good question. Pitch to Jack Wilson is a strike. Got the bottom of the order here. Seven, eight, nine, and Vasquez. You want to settle down, throw up a, a zero. You know you're facing a tough pitcher. Now it is grounded to short. One away. So you try to do you, you got an offense that's struggling. I know they haven't didn't show it last night and tonight here with the five hits and three runs. But certainly in the bottom of the lineup you want to get through it three up three down get your guys in there. Bunted bunted foul. Rob Johnson certainly doesn't have the speed but Alex Rodriguez playing way back giving him. Giving him a bunt. Somebody who's struggling, uh, 206 batting average. Mariners offense really plodding along. Last in runs, next to last in average and on base percentage, last in home runs, last in slugging. Not good. The discussion here between Angel Hernandez and Javi Vasquez. Hmm. Oh, don't go to your mouth. On the pitcher's rubber. Now that was a rule change. They, they used to have to step off and their hobby walked off the, the pitching dirt area and you can lick your hand and you know rub the ball down. But to save time, it should just be off the pitcher's rubber. It's always um it's always startling how often. Angel Hernandez is injected into a game when he's in the, when he's umpiring the game. What are you saying? Wants to be noticed? I, I, I have no idea, but don't don't you sense that Angel Hernandez when you an Angel Hernandez is umpiring a game, you know he's umpiring the game. And uh, you know, really, the biggest compliment for any umpire is that you don't know that they're there. So, yeah, it does seem like that. I know over the years, he's a longtime umpire. He, uh, you know, somehow gets in some degree of controversy. Now on the pitch, so long as you can, you can step off in this area and and lick your fingers, wipe. So long as you wipe the ball off and, you know, to save time, instead previously you had to go on the grass. They changed that rule this year, right? Yes, it's to save time. That's right. The one out. Angel Hernandez was part of the crew. The opening um, series against Boston, Joe West made the comments that we detailed yesterday, and Angel Hernandez would not grant Derek Jeter timeout when he wanted to step out after a pitch. Or David Ortiz. It was, right. it was both sides. There's a strike. And I'm not saying he's a bad up by any stretch of the imagination. I'm just saying that it always seems to be something. And that's the up high and crew tonight. And I knew that Angel was actually going to be the home plate umpire today. So what I did when I had some free time today is I looked through <laughs> uh, yeah. every single one of Al Leiter's games that he, he pitched with Angel Hernandez behind the plate. Now, your ERA was in the threes lifetime. With Angel, though, 4.70 is the home plate umpire. Mm. Swing and a miss. That's Michael Saunders down on strikes. A 1 2 3 inning for Javi Vasquez. We go to the bottom of the fourth. It's 3 0 Seattle.
We go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Yankees are down 3 0. Hard of the Yankee order against Felix Hernandez. Mark Teixeira takes pitch outside 1 0. Struck out in the first inning and walked back to the dugout saying, unbelievable. When he comes back and lines one sharply into the right field corner. Ichiro will play it out there. And standing on second with a double, Mark Teixeira. That's the Yankees' first base hit. Well, he was nothing unbelievable on the change. And here he gets a fastball middle of the plate. Nice swing, crushes that ball down the right field line. Gets the pitch. Hernandez just putting it in there for him. 15th double on the year. Nice way to start this inning. Here's the yes mo hands inside. Beautiful swing. Hey, talk about balance and being in position to get the barrel of the bat to the ball. Certainly to share did there. Here's Alex Rodriguez. Grounded foul. No, that's a fine line with a with the, what the Yankee hitters are doing. They're getting the fastball. Felix Hernandez doesn't just have a typical 95 mile an hour, which is tough enough to hit. It's got movement. It's got sync. Yankee hitters early in this game, they're, they're getting the fastball early in the count. First pitcher, they're giving it a giving it a pass. And another one. Rob Johnson getting. Oh. Now how they do it, Michael? John Flaherty tells me that you don't feel it. I don't know how you don't. It happens so fast, man. Not wasting any pitches. Three strikes to Derek Jeter's. Locked him up on the inside part of the plate. Attacked in the zone. See if he tries to waste a pitch here on Alex. Three fastballs in a row on the inside part of the plate. The double by Teixeira extends his hitting streak to 11 straight. Pitch to Alex is inside, one and two. King Felix has made five starts against the Yankees in his career. Two and three, four point five nine. He's five and five overall, but in his last three starts, two and oh, one point six nine. And he's pitched two straight complete games as well. And the other one, he was one out away from a complete game. The previous start. You know, part of that too. There, you know, there's a workload for for, for your pitchers. And certainly, Don Wakamatsu show that he's going to his his one two ace, Cliff Lee and Hernandez. Three starts ago, he went eight and two third against San Diego. Went 128 pitches in the last two. Like I said, the complete games 116, 117 pitches respectively. And that's what's tough with the Yankee lineup. If they if you wait them out and keep fouling off tough pitches, walk. We saw it early in the game yesterday with Cliff Lee. Tried to get his pitch count up, but when the game kind of got blown open, he was able to limit his pitches and go complete the game with 115 pitches. But through four innings, through three innings yesterday, he had 45 pitches. This copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the New York Yankees and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the New York Yankees. One, two. Two and two. To sure leads off second. Still nobody out. Those are the last three starts. Out of a possible 27 innings, he pitched 26 and two thirds. Also had 26 strikeouts in those innings and only three walks. 
Two walks in the first inning. But he wiggled out of it. 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a miss. Got him on that tight slider. Let's take a look at the New York State Smokers quick line quiz and the answer to the quiz. Ichiro is one of three players to have at least 240 hits in a season since 1931. Who are the other two? Wade Box at 240 and 85. Darren Erstad, mm. also 240. Where did Tony Gwynn in that? Yeah. George Brett, didn't he bat almost 400? Because he had a lot of walks. Here's Robinson Cano. Cano lined out to left in the first with runners on first and third with two outs. Robbie's on pace for those kind of numbers. Mattingly in 86 had 238 hits. Grounded foul. Hundred and seven hits coming into today's game, obviously. That was the Yankees seventy eighth game. Now the most hits that Tony Gwynn ever had was two twenty. Let's go walk to it. seem like you've got a hit on this every bat. You hit the ball hard. High fly ball left field. Longer Hans is there. For the second out. So a leadoff double and still to share at that bag. Here's Posada. Jorge fly out to center in the second. He's three for his last 20. He's a DH again tonight. And if you look at the Yankee bench, he's the best DH they have. So you put him in as a DH and then you have Chevelli catch and that's probably your best lineup. Nick Johnson and Marcus Timms if they eventually come up the DL. Well then it's a different story and Posada probably catches more but right now it makes sense. To have Jorge be the DH. Marcus Timms is a, a triple A uh, with the rehab start DH. Mm -hmm. And there's Nick Johnson, and they hope he gets back sometime in August. The 1 0. Uh, strike, 1 and 1. Grounded to first. Brangian's right there, and that will do it. The Yankees waste the leadoff double. One runner stranded. We go to the fifth. It's 3 0 Seattle.
join them on the post game show. Another conversation between Angel Hernandez and Javi Vasquez. <laughs> Much to the chagrin of Javi. Well, we'll find out later. Leading off is Ichiro. And uh, it's time now for Al's scouting report, which is brought to you by the Home Depot. Well, hit machine, 200 plus hits in nine consecutive years. We talked about the record uh, season. He had 262 hits. Just so much fun to watch. Led all the 2000s uh, in hits of 2030 hits. Right handed hitter, left handed pitcher. He was a right handed hitter as a little boy. His dad made him a left handed hitter because he said he was close to the first base. And when he was drafted, another base hit by the uh, Ornix Blues Blue Wave in Japan. They considered him to be a pitcher. Good thing for uh, baseball. And also, Freddie Lynn. He was Rookie of the Year and American League MVP, and only one other player had done that. It was Fred Lynn. He has scoreboard three nothing Mariners. How about this? I did my own little scouting report. You know what Ichiro means in Japanese? It means first boy. Now, unfortunately, Ichiro is the second son in the family. So when the second son is named first boy, it's got to make the first boy really feel bad. Right. What's he doing? <laughs> no. He doesn't like dad. <laughs> oh, dad didn't like him. But uh, Ichiro's dad, Nobuyuki, named Ichiro, Ichiro, for first boy. And he was the second born son. That's got to leave a mark, especially at Thanksgiving, you know, all the holidays. Is outside. Yeah, I know you don't have any children, Michael, but you know, coaching little little league and then seeing reading the stories on Ichiro and how his father, you know, worked him and you know, basically born to be a baseball player, batting cage, hitting, fielding, every aspect of the game from the time he was three years old, and just fun to read because I know there's a lot of parents out there that you know have their kids in every different little league and. Trying every list, a little tool to try to be the next Mark Teixeira or Ichiro or A Rod or Derek Jeter. Or any other superstar player that a kid fantasized of growing up to be a major leaguer. Famer, what he's done. So, came here when 26 years old, had to play 10 years in the big leagues in, in, in their big leagues in Japan. What his numbers would look like if he was a youngster here. You know what? He's going to be 37 this winter, and he's going to end up with 3,000 hits. And starting here in, in, in the, uh, the States at 27, that's amazing. Yeah. From 06 to uh, today, 1,005 for each row. And about 102 more than Derek Jeter. And Ichiro doesn't really conduct many interviews in Spanish, in, in, in English, but he knows English very well. And he knows some slang phrases. Remember when the Jim Cott used to do the games with us? He'd walk up to Ichiro at the batting cage, and Ichiro would just smile and go, There he is, my brother from another mother. And he'd like fire off lines like that. Well, how selective too? You get a, you come over and it's broken English, obviously being a Japanese-born player. But you could stay away from a lot of interviews if you wanted. You never wanted that. You loved interviews, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> Took my time with it. You know your your place. Yeah, but that's part of the distraction. Also, too, I, I think it's somewhat of a shame, you know. And I know the Mariners were very good for several years. This is a little bit of a lull right now, but for his. Uh, Great playing career. Will he be a guy that'll never have seen a, a World Series game? Runner goes 3 2. He's lying down the right field line. Foul. Ichiro flying around the bases, but he'll head back to first. Mm, clank there by uh, the fan. On 
Connor goes. That one is served in the left field. Colin Curtis will put it away. NYY State, located at Gate 6 of Yankee Stadium, is a great place to host your next corporate event, birthday party, and much more. NYY State will be hosting a Ridge Wine Tasting Dinner on July 14th. Please call 646-977-8325 for reservations, or you can visit nyystate.com for details. You know, we're talking about people who conduct interviews and like to conduct interviews. One of the greatest of all time dropped by and visited us in the booth. David. David Cohn was here before the game. He looked great. Tan, well rested. Yeah, he looked even. Yeah, it looked tremendous. Why? It's good not to work. Here's Russell Brannion. He really did look good, and it was good to see David. Yes. Well, you know, you say that. I, hopefully, in chess, but there, there are there are guys that you know that are kind of the go-to guys. You mentioned about David Cohn, you know, being one of those players. It's not that you enjoy it. You realize, especially as a veteran player, you've been around. That somebody has to kind of diffuse things, or at least have the group of beat writers to come over, as you know, Michael, you've done that for years, to be able to answer team questions as opposed to just you know, your game or you know what happened to you. Some guys can handle it, some guys hate it, some guys accept it as part of the job. Well, I, don't I, can, I don't think anybody's really said, yeah, I like this. So, I think he liked it. I think he enjoyed the give and take. I think it, it invigorated him. And I, I couldn't agree with you more about this, Al. He did it for a purpose. He let the other guys off the hook. The writers crowded around David, and the other guys could just leave. The Paul O'Neills didn't have to be saddled down with interviews, and Tino's, and Derek. Everybody talked to David, and I think there was a method to his madness. Yes. He did that when he was with the Mets, and he carried it over across town to the Yankees, and they won championships, so he was doing that. Ooh, the Angel, he's there. He did it yeah, again. Yeah, he did it again. Wouldn't give time. Oh, it's a free strike for Javi Vasquez. Didn't get it. Watch here. Now he steps out. Angel Hernandez saying, no, you don't. Now, now Vasquez recognizes all he has to do is pump in a nice little strike. That's a total ball. And Brandon is walking. Isn't it a little odd, though, Al? We know that there's been a directive that they'd like the games to be sped up just a bit. Why is it Angel Hernandez? I mean, we, we see every game, and we don't see any other umpire not allow players to step out. Why is it Angel Hernandez who doesn't allow a player to step out? Well, I, you said it. I mean, I, I think there are some guys, and maybe Angel is one of those umpires that, that I'm not going to say wants to be noticed, but, you know, that definitely is one that is doing things that he ultimately ends up being noticed. And you're right. He's the only one that I that I know of right now that, that does stuff like that that just occurred. I have not seen any other umpire deny a timeout. Good night so far for Milton Bradley, a home run and an infield single. You know, and also, too, now and this is my pitcher's cap is on right now, but just watching these games, and I do, I do chart the game, you know, there's been a lot of, there's been a handful of pitches, both sides, that, have, you know, somewhat have squeezed the plate. I thought a couple of the pitches in that in that about against Brandon. So you know the irony there is that you got an umpire that wants to speed up the game, but yet you know you're going to have a small zone. You, the, the way to quicken a game, and I always say, is that, is that high strike, plate coverage a little above the belt, make hitters more aggressive. They're swing the bat. You don't have situations like this. You got pitching coaches running out, common guys down. Umpire's got to come out, break it up. You'll have much more of an aggressive pitchers across the board. Going out there, okay enough, guys, long enough. You know, bad counts. I'm not saying give away, you know, a ball that's a ball that make it a strike. The count two and zero on Milton Bradley. Lost that one to left field, backing up Curtis, and he makes the play. The runners have that. Well, Bradley gave that a ride. Travel a lot more than it seemed like it should, so that's two outs. Hey, tomorrow the Yankees close out the series against the Mariners right here in the Bronx. Our coverage on Yes is going to start at 12.30, the Tri-State Ford pregame. Then Al and I are back here in the booth with the call. The Mariners against the Yankees tomorrow at 12.30. 
Holy Agnes and CC Sabathia will get the start for the Yanks. And Ryan Roland Smith. Count 1 0 to Jose Lopez. Well, certainly the formula for the Mariners is as dismal as their offense has been. I certainly haven't seen that in these two games so far. You have your two aces going. You realize that as, a, as an opposing starter, you have to be on your game. If not, it's going to be awfully tough for your offense to battle back. So, you know, you're, you're not just talking about an ace of a staff. You're talking about you know, maybe top seven, eight, nine, ten pitchers in the game in Cliff Lee and tonight with Felix Hernandez. Last night they didn't get the start from Phil Hughes. And certainly three runs is an insurmountable deficit. You want to keep it there. Put, put the statistics, Mike, to uh, what Felix Hernandez has done in his starts. In only three of his starts, he gave up five runs or more. This is his 17th start. Five runs he gave up against uh, Texas at four and a third. Gave up the seventh spot in the next start against the Angels and uh, six innings against Texas again. So they have a tough pitcher, obviously. There's the inside move chasing each row back. Each row is on second and Brangen is at first. Two one count, two outs, top of the fifth. Pitch up and away, three and one. Chad Godan is ready in the bullpen. And Ryan Langerhans is on deck. Drive and that's a foul ball. And that was uh, about a foot foul of being a two run double. Yeah, right. Right now, Cervelli's going out to Vasquez. They're they're not on the same page. There's a couple little shake offs coming out, making sure that they're on, thinking alike, hanging slider, getting back in the count three two pitch. Potentially could be his last at bat. Make it the best pitch of the night. Popped up. And out of play. The battle right here for Javi. Not being on command control. Just being off enough. And it's only three runs, but when you battle and you see that pitch count up to 92 pitches already, you're not through the fifth. You realize it's not going to be a a deep night in innings wise. It's the mentally tough part of pitching, just to be able to continue to maintain the right mindset and make pitches. Three two missed outside, so the bases are loaded. So Vasquez struggled a bit in his last time out against Arizona. Didn't lose the game. Yankees did win in extra innings and uh, laboring just a bit tonight. Certainly not getting slapped around by any stretch of the imagination, but he doesn't seem very sharp. Godin's just ready for the signal now. He's uh, he's warmed up. Langerhans pinch hit in the second inning for Franklin Gutierrez, who left the game with an upset stomach. Late on that one, and Longahans is one for two. He singled in the second, struck out in the third. Ichiro's at third, Branyan at second, and Jose Lopez is over first. Pitch count building.
In a short career with the bases loaded, Ryan Langerhans is seven for 31. That's 226. Vasquez pitch count is high. Why? Because he's thrown 25 pitches this inning. One one. There's a strike in the count one and two. Longer Hans not being able to pull the trigger on that fastball. Missing ends up being middle of the plate. He got him out with off speed pitch. The first at bat, he came in and replaced the Franklin Gutierrez. The Pazzo is sitting in left field. Let's see if he goes with the hard stuff upstairs or something soft in the dirt. Swing and a miss. Got him. Goes upstairs with heat. No runs. They hit. No errors. And the bases are left loaded at the end of four and a half. We are halfway through. It's three nothing Seattle. GMC presents center stage with Michael K. From his top chart days of the four seasons to his recent cameos on the hottest TV shows, Frankie Valley discusses his legendary career on center stage tonight after the post game, only on Yes. Got to watch that one. Frankie Valley, that's a legend. Jersey boy. Jersey. I've seen the Jersey boys three times. Three times. Loved it. Count one and two. I was a big Broadway guy. Seen Wicked a couple of times. Actually saw Fela. Actually saw that with him. <laughs> As Granderson goes down on strikes. Aren't you? Don't you love Broadway? I do. I think it's great. One of the great parts of New York. As I was telling LeBron just the other day, they don't have Broadway in Akron. You were telling LeBron. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Colin Curtis with a pop up. Doesn't the second it. baseman can't see it. Now he does, and it drops, and Curtis hustling all the way gets himself a double. Figgins had no idea. And if you look at the sky right now, not quite day and certainly not quite night. And it got lost in the gloaming. He didn't see it right off the bat. It's got to be a helpless feeling. As Michael said, it is twilight. And if you don't get it off the bat, that's exactly what happens. He needed some help. Obviously, there you see Figgins trying to get some help from Brannion. Collis, Colin Curtis doing the right thing. Busted out of the box, getting a double out of this. That's twilight. Not the movie, the sky. So is that the break the Yankees need? Now 
And the pitch to Cervelli is outside 1 0. As a pitcher, I know what you're going to say. Well, you got to just absorb it. That's got to annoy you. You had an out. I, I think the way he's pitching, you know, depends on the game. Certainly the way he's dominating right now. Yes, you, you know, it's part of the game, and boy, you know, you want to do the pity party, but it certainly didn't result in a run. I, I'll tell you what, it'd be really upsetting if, if, you know, there were some runners on base and he ends up scoring a couple of runs as a result of it. Very important for all the fields, fielders right now to really pay attention to that zone when that ball's hit off the bat. Pick it up immediately before it gets to that twilight sky. One one. Popped up. Let's see if he sees this one. Figgins does not see it. And Ichiro does. Figgins was going back and really had no idea where the ball was. Wow. They can laugh about it because Ichiro was there. Well, you would think after the first one. Now, I don't know. Granted, you either see it or you don't. But it, immediately off the bat, before it gets up past the stadium uh, seating, if you can track it right through the zone. Hernandez immediately, there it is, point as most pitchers should identify, help the fielders. He was starting to get annoyed <laughs> when he thought the ball was going to drop. But Ichiro bailed him out. Now that'll bring up Jeter. Jeter walked in the first inning and then struck out looking at a good fastball on the inside part of the plate. Right back to Hernandez, knocked him down from his backside. He gets the out for the final out of the fifth. No run to hit, no errors, and one man left on base. Hernandez saw that one. Figgins didn't see the other one. And we go to the six. It's three nothing. Seattle. You've been texting at 58772. After the pitch, we'll tell you the results. And a bunt. And if it stays fair, it's a hit. And it kicks foul. Now we get a chance to see the boat. How about that? I mean, really. I'd like those 30%. Give a reason. To give your home number out. Let them <laughs> call Al and tell him why you would say that he shouldn't be a first bat. I mean, 630 home runs. I think because we said 100%. I think just for the fun of it. So the spiteful people out there? Oh, yeah. That's healthy. I like that. 3 nothing Seattle. The 0-1 to Wilson. Popped up. Let's see if the Yankees could see it. Cervelli does and makes the play. 
Well, here are the this this is for the thirty percent who say he's not a first ballot Hall of Famer. Twenty two major league seasons, thirteen time All Star, ten Gold Gloves, won the MVP in ninety seven, fifth all time with six hundred and thirty home runs. Well, what what about that is not a Hall of Famer? He didn't win two MVPs. He didn't win a World Series. Got hurt. Did get hurt a lot. I talked to his dad a couple of weeks ago and asked him what kind of numbers would Junior put up at Yankee Stadium. He said, well, if you look at his average and his numbers, he said he, he's a 300 hitter there. And he said, I thought right field was made for him with the porch and the short porch and the uh, the upper deck. He said, I think he would have been unbelievable at Yankee Stadium. One would never know. Ken Griffey Jr. always used to say he didn't want to play for the Yankees. He was upset over a, a perceived slight when he was a kid, and his dad was, uh, you know, a Yankee then. He wasn't allowed to run around and play. But um, I spoke to Tino Martinez, and he said, Griff just said that. He would have loved to have been a Yankee. He just knew that that would have been the biggest stage for him. He would have loved it. Would have gotten a couple World Series. Yeah. Now we talked about unanimous Al. Is, is he going to be a unanimous selection? As Johnson goes down swinging, only no one's ever been unanimous. The highest, the highest percentage ever. Watch this catch that Griffey made in the old Yankee Stadium. Mm. And that was against Jesse Barfield, mm. who they acquired for you. Yes, I do remember Millie. See Marte getting running. Seaver has the highest percentage of votes ever, 98.34. 98.84. But hasn't there been some some of the writers that just say they just they just don't do it? Uh, I, that I, and and you know what? I think that's First ridiculous. You're going know, you, you to know why I, I don't like that? Because what if all of the writers decided to do that at the same time? Then the guy would be off the ballot. You couldn't vote for him anymore. You have to have a certain percentage of votes. I think it's five percent of the vote in order to stay on the ballot. What if everybody got independently said, "You know, I don't want this guy to be unanimous. He wouldn't be on the ballot." Anymore. Didn't that happen with Roberto Alomar? People were, you know, with the spitting in incident. They said, "Yes, we know he's a Hall of Famer, but I'm not going to vote him this time." Right. I mean, he didn't get the, the enough vote. We're talking about unanimous. He didn't get enough votes, obviously, to be qualified or uh, to get in. Well, this is how uh, tough it is. Babe Ruth. Got 95.13 percent of the vote. Babe Ruth, Willie Mays. I mean, some might argue he's the best player of all time. Got 94.68. I mean, that's just being obstinate. How's he not a Hall of Famer? Nolan Ryan, second most, with 98.79 percent after Seaver. Well, these writers are are people, and I'm sure along the way, maybe they were slighted in some way, and they've used a, a grudge or two against them. The 2 2? Yeah, you wonder how Seaver is not unanimous. I mean, well, what did Tom Seaver ever do that he wouldn't be a Hall of Famer first ballot? How could you not vote for him? And the 2 2. And I also feel that as time moves on now, um, newspapers, unfortunately, are in trouble, and a lot of them are closing. I think the electronic media should be allowed to vote for the Hall of Fame. I don't think it should just be the baseball writers. I think that people that do the games on TV or radio or cover the games for electronic outlets, they see just as many games as writers. So I think that's something that's going to have to be investigated because 100 years from now, are there going to be newspapers? I hope there are. I think newspapers are very important for the country, but how do we know? Well, there's there's already a lot of the, the sports writers going over to the Internet, internet as you say, right. because of the coverage. 3 2, foul back. Saunders had a home run in the third inning off of Vasquez, then struck out in the fourth. High pitch count for Javi, 112, but they want to get him through this inning. Save the bullpen just a bit. The 3 2. 
Nice play there by Teixeira. He will flip to Vasquez covering, and that will do it. A 1-2-3 inning here in the top of the sixth. 3-0 Mariners. Time now for a message from our friends at the Fox Business Network. Just two hits, one by that man in the on-deck circle, Mark Desher, the other one, a twilight double by Colin Curtis that should have been caught by the second baseman, Sean Pickett. So Nick Swisher will lead off here against Hernandez. Pitch outside, 1-0. Popped up. Another try in the twilight. This time Figgins sees it and makes the play. Little darker sky. He was able to let everybody know early on that he tracked it. Well, Cherry's guy got it. Looks like a little breaking it down. Yeah. I can see that one. Here's Teixeira rocketed a double right in the fourth. And a strike. Now the Yankees are swinging earlier in the count against Hernandez than they usually do because they don't want to fall behind. He's throwing strikes. Walked two batters in the first, nothing since. Count one and one. Well, also, too, Michael, when you have a guy with, with three out pitches, great changeup, great curve slider, you know you're going to get your fastball. It's just. Your opportunity to get a good grip at it. That's not like he broke his back. That's a change up there. 89 mile an hour, just the bottom drops out of it. And what I like about what Felix does, it's not only to the left handed hitters. Nobody see a right handed pitcher throw change ups to the lefties, not the righties, and vice versa. Left handed pitchers change ups to the right handed hitters. He'll use it either side, which just is an added weapon to his arsenal. Cliff Lee with a complete game. Last night, just a spectator tonight. This is what King Felix has done in his career. Last year, the best year, 19 and 5, 2.49. Check swing, but he goes around, and Teixeira strikes out for the second time tonight. Well, Yankee fans become part of the winning team by joining the New York Yankees fan club for just $40. You will receive an official membership card, a world championship nylon banner, a world championship coin, a New York Yankees cap, special ticket discounts, and other exclusive fan club items to join. Call 1-800-GO-YANKS or log on to Yankees.com today. Here's Alex. Check swing and foul back. Whoa. 
Alex walked in the first and struck out in the fourth. Quickly, 0 2. Just two fastballs that just hurt to see hack at 94, 95 miles an hour. But you see the late movement for Alex Rodriguez, great hitter, to really be surprised in, in the sense that, that the ball's just rushing up on him. Swing and a miss. Foul tip held on to by Johnson. A 10 pitch, one, two, three inning. We played six. It's all King Felix. Three nothing, Seattle. Yankees baseball on yes is brought to you in part by JNR Music and Computer World and by Ford, the official truck of the New York Yankees. Well, Joe Girardi makes the call to the bullpen brought to you by AT&T. Rethink possible. Javier Vasquez goes six, allows three runs, and they turn to Damaso Morte. He'll pitch in his 27th game. Obviously a specialist, 14 and two-thirds, eight hits. Too many walks and 10 strikeouts. Yeah, that, those 11 walks really stand out. Verizon Wireless scoreboard 3 0 Seattle as Ichiro grounds it foul. Mariners locked up Ichiro, five year, $90 million contract. He signed it in July of 2007, and it will keep him in a Mariner uniform through the age of 39 in 2012. But how's this for setting yourself up for your own little 401k? So it's a $90 million deal. And the team is deferring $25 million of the $90 million. So they will not fully pay him until 2032. Well, it, it makes sense. In this day and age, it's a ton of money, a lot of money to be made in the game. Why not? Pretty nice resume. Won the rookie of the year and the MVP in 01. Nine time All Star, nine gold gloves. Amazing amount of hits in 2004. All nine seasons, 200 plus hits. And only Fred Lynn in 75 won the rookie of the year and the MVP in the same year. So during this deal, it'll get 17 million a year. He got a $5 million signing bonus, and as we mentioned, a lot of it is deferred. Deferred money must be fun. You know, it's like, boom, it just shows up. 
not expecting it, it's there. Well, you expect it because it was money that was owed. And you just, but I mean, you just, probably forget about it. No, you don't. You don't forget about it. <laughs> David Robertson warms up. The two-two missed outside. It's almost like the hundred and seventy dollar check that Paul O'Neill gets every couple of weeks for his Seinfeld appearance. The three two fouled away. Is that right? Yeah, he keeps getting these checks and you know, Seinfeld's gonna be on forever, so it pays for a couple of meals at the sizzle. 170 for one show? I think it was something like that. Come on. He was brilliant in that show, hitting two home runs. <laughs> That one is chopped slowly to short, charging his Jeter. He fires the first. They get Ichiro. Nice play by Jeter. Great play by Jeter. Knowing, obviously, the, the speed of Ichiro, and this is what he's done for his whole career. Ichiro Suzuki coming up strong. Bang, bang. Good play. Coming out of the box, left-hander, bang it on the ground. Run. Gets a nice little hop there. Quickly makes the transfer. Good, strong throw. Ooh. Very close. How about this? This is why you have Marte on the team. Lefties are now 0 for the last 19 against Marte. In fact, they're 0 for 19 in the season. And Marte has also held opponents hitless in the last 17 at bats. So he's starting to pitch very well. Dickens was 0 for 3 against Vasquez. The 0 1. One and one. Which is the very reason why you have Marte, obviously, nice postseason last year. You're going to get a key lefty or two out late in the game. That's the role of what Marte brings to the pitching staff. I think that bat might have gotten Angel Hernandez. Let's see. Got him on the padding on his shoulder, but that's still has to hurt. Did he go? No, he did not. Wow. Well, he makes an effort to swing and checks up. Yeah, that's tough. That was close. See why Marte's tough on lefties. A good sneaky fastball, sidewinder, drops down low three quarters, his arm slot. Good fastball slider combination with lefty. 3 2. Foul Two. Foul boy. It's a short little quick stroke from Figgins, just trying to keep the ball in play, see a pitch with fastballs away, not trying to do a whole lot. This is an approach for a small guy like Figgins trying to go the opposite way. Right center field approach. Three two. Battle within the battle. Tough for a pitcher. You keep got a guy fighting off the of pitches. You're thinking strike. Normally pitchers throw for corners here. You just throw it for a strike somewhere in the zone where wanting them to put it in play. Nice battle won there by Figgins as he lines that single to left field. Now we told you that Figgins has a stolen base streak working. Six games in a row. Good head down, the ball end up cutting, but you know, it, that was the, a great battle for Figgins. Marte, you don't want to walk him, you want him to put in play. You said about the 11 walks in the, in the 14 innings, you'd much rather have that than, than to give him the base on ball. Good at bat.
He's going to throw to Sagan. Not in time, and it gets past Jeter, backed up nicely by Cano. So that is seven straight games with the stolen base for Figgins. And it's his 23rd stolen base in 27 attempts. Right, he was going. Big leg kick. He saw it easily. This is a situation where he absolutely got that stolen base off of Marte. Big leg kick. Some guys uh, don't realize, you know, there's less paying attention or concern with the runner, but Figgins absolutely was heading out there. Nice backup from Cano, keeping that ball from not getting to the outfield. Lifetime Brady against Marte 0 for 2. Not much of a history. Missed outside. I know King Felix is pitching a gem, but this is a, a big run late in the game for the Mariners to try to push across here. Big stolen bases. Good pitch right here. 2 2. Driven out into right center field, giving chases. Granderson, he's not going to get there. It's gone. A two run home run for Brandon. And it is 5 0 Seattle. That is a big blow. For the Mariners. Sure is. You're trying to keep him at three runs. It's a slider, middle away. Russell Brandon has that kind of power. Said he's the only one that hit it off the Mohegan Sun glass in center field. He absolutely crushed that ball. His 11th home run on the year, 26 RBI, positive in the Yankee bullpen. That was the first home run given up off of Marte. Beautiful swing, head down, got it out front. And then the first hit by a lefty. That lounging Yankee reliever was, but he made the play seem very easy. So that's why they got Brandon to supply some power. Here's Milton Bradley. Oh, strike. And Boone Logan with that uh, catch. Holding the ball in his right hand. Count one and one. Grounded the short for the second out. Dave Allen checking to see if Robertson is ready. King Felix pacing. He wants to uh, get to the mound. He's been pitching great. Hey, you'll take a, you'll take some insurance runs anytime. Late in the game, that's a big blow. Even you know, let's see how this game plays out. But three to three to zero deficit, obviously much easier. Now down five runs. Well, Brandon's home run snapped a string of 19 straight hitless at bats for lefties against Marte. And uh, incidentally, that does not span over the entire season, so it's over for the last 19. Well, Joe Girardi's walking slowly to the mound, and uh, Angel Hernandez is making the signal to the bullpen before Joe does because it's the second trip. So Robertson will come on to face Jose Lopez. It's fun. No, it's Chad Godin. It's 5 0 Seattle.
the two run shot by Brandon here against Marte certainly has widened the lead insurmountable no but remember they're going up against a pitcher who really is dealing so in front of another big crowd Chad Godin comes on in relief you see his numbers he's been pitching better of late now Seattle a team that came into the series having a lot of trouble scoring runs they have three home runs tonight that matches a season high for the M's. Well, you talk about you know going into this series. I mean, in less than 16 innings, they have had 20 hits between last night and tonight for a club that was last in RBIs in American League, last in Major League Baseball in home runs, last in slugging. I mean, right across the board. Worst average to that for a team in the American League have not shown that in these two games. Driven in the right field, Nick Swisher makes the play on the run, and that's going to do it in the seventh. But two runs on two hits, no errors, and nobody left on base at the end of six and a half. Time for the seventh inning stretch here at the stadium. Seattle leads the Yankees five nothing, but we'll stay right where we are and honor America in the Bronx. Please rise and offer a moment of silent prayer. We remember the servicemen and women who are serving our country at home and around the globe. Thank you. Now Kate Smith's rendition of God Bless America. Well, the last one I can't speak to, Bob, but we look forward to that as we go to the bottom of the seventh inning on the Verizon Wireless scoreboard. It's 5 nothing Seattle over the Yankees. And Robinson Cano leads off, and the pitch is low, 1-0 from Felix Hernandez. So now Seattle's lead is 5 nothing. Cano 0 for 2 with two fly balls to left. And now he is 0 for 3 as he lines one to Wilson. One away. Two line outs from Robinson Cano. A tough pitcher, obviously, with what Felix Hernandez is doing. Hardest battle for the Yankee hitters is to just stay within each of 
get backs and just try to get a pitch to drive. Let's take a look at the Yankees in game box score brought to you by McDonald's. Just two hits for the Yankees a double by Teixeira and really a pop up that was lost in the uh, lost in the gloaming or the twilight by Colin Curtis. Uh, Sean Figgins couldn't see it. So one legitimate hit against Felix Hernandez. The 0 1 to Posada and Hernandez continues to deal the count 0 2. That's the that's the pitch right there, Michael. That's very impressive. And the first about to share where you get struck out, he said, "Unbelievable." That's the kind of drop off the table type, type pitch he's got. And then he comes back with a hard slider at 85 miles an hour. It's a changeup. It's run. It'll run away, but tremendous arm speed. Look at that ball float away. Now he's throwing 95. He ends up throwing that 89. It's a six mile an hour difference, but the arm speed is what hitters pick up. Looks just like a fastball. Strike three, Posada down looking. Very impressive. You got different weapons for for Fernandez Hernandez to be able to go to. You see him just lock up Posada. He's got the hard breaking ball. Now this one he takes a little off. Just a nice little 12 to sixer. That got a break that goes sideways, and this one goes straight down. From respecting 95 miles an hour, great change up in the 88, 89 range, and then two different type of breaking balls. And there's a strike to Granderson. Hernandez working quickly and deals another strike and the count on two. And he could go just a couple places here off Granderson big curveball fastball high fastball. Something breaking ball in the dirt. That was in the dirt, but Granderson didn't chase. Certainly not for the Yankees, uh, you know. But you watch a guy, a young pitcher like Felix, do his thing and be able to have so many weapons. It's certainly fun to watch. Grounded to third. Lopez is there. And a 1 2 3 inning for Felix Hernandez. Yankees retired in order in the seventh. We go to the eighth. It's 5 0 Seattle. Give you tonight's candidates in a sec. First pitch from Godin is low. Felix Hernandez, Milton Bradley, Russell Branyan, Michael Saunders. And I think most people will vote for Felix. Vote now, make your voice heard. Standard text messaging rates apply. 
That first pitch was actually uh, called a strike. That one's a ball, so they count one and one. Count one and two. Godin came in to get the final out of the seven. The home run in the seven, the two run shot by Brandon, changes the whole complexion of this game and um, the hope to come back. As I said, this Yankee team has an explosive offense, but you're going to need some help from the pitcher to make some mistakes. So far, it doesn't seem as if Felix Hernandez is in the mood to make mistakes. 2 2. Well, and you, also, you can't hit a five run home run. A three run deficit, you could scratch a run and get a little closer, and you're always. You know, a single or a walk and a, and a big fly away from tying the game up. You got that five run. And you just, just see the approach too differently with Felix Hernandez. Granderson makes the play. Three up, three down. Last two innings. Well, let's check out tomorrow's starting pitchers brought to you by Fios TV, Internet, and Phone. This is Beyond Cable. This is Fios. Ryan Roland Smith. Not having a good year, one and seven, six point one eight for the Mariners. And CC Sabathia has been pitching lights out of late Friday against the Dodgers. Great game, nine and three, three point four nine. Now mark this down. Our coverage begins at twelve thirty. It's a matinee on Thursday. It's going to be on yes, and the first pitch will be about one oh eight. There's a strike to Jack Wilson. In fact, the next four games before the Yankees head out on the West Coast will be day games: Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. All one oh five starts. July 4th weekend coming up. Beautiful. You take plans out? Yes. Really? Driving distance? Driving distance uh -huh. out. You don't want to give you location. Well, east. Up the middle. Grabbed by Jeter. And Wilson is out for the second out of the inning. Boy, it's so reactionary. It's Chad Godin reaching down with his pitching hand. You you want to figure out any way to stop the baseball and had enough hop for Derek Jeter to get to this baseball. Nice little short hop gets his feet underneath him. Watch here, Chad go down. The reaction is, oh, I could get it. Oh, get my hand out of the way. See, so many pitchers injure themselves enough to lose a start. Or worse, DL. And the one one. One and two. You know, there's always some silver lining. Watching last night's start with Cliff Lee, dominant, other than the couple of home runs he gave up to Nick Swisher. Now here tonight with Felix Hernandez, frontline guys in the game. But you, you saw Chan Ho Park last night, did a nice job. Now here Chad Godin coming in, being able to get some work in and pitch in meaningful spots. You know, we're ultimately maybe getting the uh, in more meaningful games as the as the season goes on to prove to your manager and pitching coach that you deserve it. Robert Godin's last three appearances struck out five of five batters in the six innings, scoreless. Another Chan Ho last night, Michael. Two innings, one strike, got no hits. He, he looked good. Trying to give Joe Girardi some other looks in, in the bullpen as the season goes on. Different guys, different roles that they're in that you can pitch your way back to further part of the game. Missed outside. And the count three and two to Johnson. Three strikeouts for Johnson. He does not want the golden sombrero. Right now he has the hat trick. Yesterday, now a spectator today. And the payoff popped up. Long run for Cano. They can't make the play. 
He called off to share. Cano makes that play usually unerringly. But uh, just went off the edge of his glove. We'll see if they score that in E4. It was a long run. Mm. Thought he was closer to the stands than he was. Yeah, he said, uh, my bad. Yeah, once he calls off everyone, you aggressively go to it. But you saw him track it. He didn't get a chance to see how far he was from the stands. Looked like he went after it gingerly. Sean Figgins has had a rough night at second. No errors, but a couple of lost fly balls. No play on that one. As Rob Johnson says, thank you, and he works a walk. Well, time is certainly running out. And if you'd like to vote for your 2010 All-Star selection, you have to do it soon. You can help send your favorite Yankees to the All-Star game by voting up to 25 times at Yankees.com. Log on and vote exclusively on Yankees.com today. Voting ends tomorrow at 11.59 p.m. Eastern time. Pitch to Saunders is low. Hey, Alex Rodriguez uh, took part in something very, very special today. Uh, Bronx Lebanon Hospital here in the borough. Uh, they dedicated the Alex Rodriguez Pediatric Outpatient Center. And the Yankee third baseman donated a quarter of a million dollars to have that center built. So a nice thing by Alex to do, uh, getting involved in the community. And certainly anytime you can help children, uh, it's a great thing. So he has that center named after him, and I'm sure he's quite proud of that. Yeah, absolutely. Good for him. And, you know, there's so many guys that do an awful lot of good charitable work, and Alex is one of them. Not only do they reach out with respect of other charities, but they all, a lot, many of players now have their own foundations and do a lot of good work out in the community. Just got a piece also, looked like you got a piece of Cervelli. Angel Hernandez walks out to go down just to give Cervelli a little time to collect himself. The tools of ignorance. Catchers. Tough guys. The 2-2 two -two outside. Runner goes, 3-2, in on the hands, popped up. Cervelli goes after, but runs out of room. Girardi's been there. Long-time catcher. Always felt those same pains. Again, the runner goes on the 3-2. Driven deep to right field. There it goes. See ya. Into the second deck. The second home run for Saunders. It's a two-run shot, and it gives Seattle a 7-0 lead. Get, gets a 3-2 fastball and, and looked good in his first at bat. Same swing, good approach inside, down and in. And I don't know a whole lot of left-handed hitters in the big leagues that don't like that pitch on the inside part of the plate. Chad Godin going after him, just get trying to throw a strike now. His seventh home run on the season. His first career multi-home run for Saunders. Each row fouls that back. So seven runs by Seattle, six of them coming via the home run.
See a guy like Ichiro going for the downs there. You got a big comfortable lead. Have the Mariners haven't seen this a whole lot this year. Tapped out left side. Alex Rodriguez there. And it gets Ichiro for the final out of the eighth. But two more runs on one hit. No errors and nobody left. The two run home run by Michael Saunders. He has two bombs tonight. And the Mariners have a 7 nothing lead. Over the Yankees. The Yankees have managed just two hits, one legitimate hit. Uh, clean double down the right field line by Mark Teixeira. The other double was by the guy at the plate, Colin Curtis. He had a high pop up at second base, and uh, it was at twilight. Sean Piggins couldn't see it. Dropped to the ground, and it was a double. You know, watching these last two nights, Michael, I don't know how you feel about it, but when you have, you know, stellar front end pitchers make any team mediocre record wise look like playoff contenders, World Series teams between what Cliff Lee was able to do and also Felix Hernandez. It shows you how important pitching is to the game because let's say last year when Zach Greinke was pitching, Kansas City was a dreadful team, but not when he was pitching. It takes it to a whole nother level. There's a ground ball to Figgins, and Colin Curtis is out. Hey, it's time to take a look at the Land Rover drives at the game out. Why get a car when you can own a Land Rover? Well, it comes from Michael Saunders getting this solo home run, getting the ball out over the plate, driving the ball deep in the right field. And then in the seventh, they hit the seventh home run. Two run homer, we just saw that one. Driving that ball, upper deck, second tier. The Land Rover drives of the game, Michael Saunders. Well, here is Francisco Cervelli, and the pitch is outside, 1 0. Which is where we talked about earlier in the game about which direction this team is going. And they certainly, what they did two years ago, lost over 100 games last year, over 500, made some moves the Mariners did to position themselves as a, a contender. And it hasn't happened up to this point, but their last, their last 10 games are 7 and 3. And again, when you have Cliff Lee and Felix Hernandez on the mound, your playoff team, a little bit of offense, they're that good. They have a lot to make up, but you never know through the month of July here. They're 14 back. They do have to leapfrog a couple teams to get close to the Texas Rangers. Popped up. Right side. Brannion makes the play for the second out.
Not a big crowd here at the stadium tonight. 46,309 on a beautiful Wednesday evening. Reminder, everybody, tomorrow is a matinee, so we'll be on at 1230. First pitch right around 108. Derek's 0 for 2 with a walk today. And he has a four-game hitting streak on the line. Shows Blunt there. Takes a pitch outside. And we told you about how anemic the Seattle offense has been. Well, they scored seven last night, seven tonight. First time all year they've scored seven runs in back-to-back -back games. This will be the 100th pitch by King Felix, and it's a strike. Love the uh, love there. It's one of those games if you're a Yankee fan. He has been overpowering tonight. As he retires, the Yankees in order one, two, three. Three straight innings of one, two, three. As we go to the ninth, it's all Seattle, seven nothing over the Bombers. Allowing two runs. Sean Piggins leading off. Now against Chad Godin. Yankees have a couple of changes. As they get the big guns out with a three game or a game tomorrow at one. Here's Piggins, the trouble he had in the field. And he also lost that one, but Ichiro is backing him up. Well, there's three quarters of a new infield right now. You've got Russo at third, Pena at short, and Huffman at first. And the 2-2. Two -two. Inside, 3-2. and two. 
can the Mariners make a run? That's the question. I don't mean tonight. I mean overall. They're 12 games under 500, so assume they win this. That's 11 games under 500. And just watching how Oakland can't score runs out, I think they're better than Oakland. So I can see them overtaking Oakland. But Texas and LA, those are good teams. Are they going to lose 14 more games than you? That's the question. Well, I, I think Texas, too. So they're in the market for a, a starting pitcher. If they can afford it. Yeah, if they can afford good point. Because of their financial difficulties. The ownership uh, selling. But there's still the, the what if. And I pose that with a, with their general manager. And, you know, if they have a fantastic month, it will be certainly a, a, a hard uh, decision to make because of it. I just think with Cliff Lee in particular, if, if you get a vibe that you're not going to be able to re-sign him, you know, you're just going to get more on the market now than you would for, you know, your draft pick and who knows two, three, four years later of how that's a flyer as opposed to a, a major league ready prospect now. Brangen lost one to left field and deep. Curtis back. He's on the track and he makes the play in front of the scoreboard for the first out. Please don't miss the WB Mason post game after the final out to get highlights and analysis from this game and also around the majors. Plus, we're going to talk to the key players from the clubhouse. It's all coming up on the WB Mason post game. It's only on yes. Now, how about this? This could be disheartening because Seattle is seven and three in its last ten games, seven hundred winning percentage. Great, right? They lost the game during that time because Texas was eight and two. And they didn't gain a game on LA because LA was seven yeah. and three. That's that's tough sledding. Well, and that's the problem. You know, you have 14 games back of, of one club. You're you're trying to leapfrog everybody in the division. And I think you probably get a better package for Lee if you trade him before July 31st because you're giving the team that gets him another four starts, another five starts. As Milton Bradley swings and misses for the second out. Well, there are certain pitchers or players that are that are team changers, division changers. And I, I think Cliff Lee with the right club really is a, a league change. You have a especially if you have another ace, you know, one A kind of guy, because you're now going into series. Assuming you end up getting in the playoffs. We saw last year what the Yankees did with their three starters. You have shut down starters in, in Felix Hernandez and Cliff Lee. Where but you're opposing those those starters, you absolutely know as, as the opposing starting pitcher, you have to be on your game, which means limiting two, three runs for your own offense to know that they're gonna have a tough battle all night. Popped up shallow center and Granderson is there. He'll make the play. So they do not get hurt by the leadoff walk to Figgins. He is stranded. Did the Yankees have a rally in their bones? It'll have to be a big one as we go to the bottom of the ninth.
truly great engineering today at your authorized dealer. And by Avis, the official rental car company of the New York Yankees. Well, it's 7-0. Mariners over the Yanks as we go to the bottom of the ninth inning. And the Mariners are trying to get back-to-back -back complete games. Cliff Lee yesterday and Felix Hernandez today. If Hernandez gets a win tonight, it would be only the second time this year that Lee and Hernandez have won back-to-back -back games. Wow. This is a lot about how that offense has been going this year. And Nick Swisher pops it up. Longer Hans will make the play for the first half. Well, that's going to bring up Pena. Swisher was not thrilled. I don't think any of the Yankees are thrilled. Swisher 0 for 4 tonight. After hitting two home runs last night against Lee. So this will be Pena's first at bat. Remember, he took over short, and they put him in the number three hole, and Russo is batting cleanup. He replaces Rodriguez in the cleanup spot. For Payne, a nice pinch hit assignment against a very tough pitcher in Felix Hernandez. And the 1 1. 2 and 1. How about this? The last time. That teammates threw complete game back to backs against the Yankees. You have to go back to April 21st and 22nd of the year 2000. And that was Chris Carpenter and Kelby Escobar of the Blue Jays. Wow. Ten years. And Pena does not want that to happen as he works a walk. Now, the last two times, or the last time two complete games were thrown back to back against the Yankees at all, was May 28th and 29th of 2000 again. And it was done by separate teams Pedro Martinez on the 28th and Omar Olivares of the A's on the 29th. So, whichever way you slice it, that's 10 years ago. That was a championship Yankee team, though. They ended up beating the Mets in the Subway Series. But that year, the Yankees only won 87 games. Yeah, and a couple things. Uh, you know, complete games are, are, are at a premium now. But pitchers just don't complete them. And obviously, what the Yankees do as a lineup, take a lot of pitches. You, you see more times than not, starting pitchers, 100 pitches around that sixth inning mark. And they just don't get a chance as a result of a tough lineup and also a team that fouls off a lot of pitches and waits them out. Seeing his pitch count climb, and there was some action in the Mariners bullpen. 111 pitches for Felix Hernandez. There's a breaking ball strike. Russo's been sitting on the bench and seeing this guy throw 94, 95, and then he drops that one in. John White warming up, and you also see John Wetland, former Yankee closer, the 96 World Series team, as Russo swings and misses for the second out. Here's John Wetland, Yankee closer in 95 and 96. Mo, oh, his setup guy. Yeah. Quite the tandem when Wetland and Mariano were doing the eighth inning and ninth inning. Mariano was amazing in 96. He's been amazing his whole career, but Yankees played six inning games. Mo would pitch a scoreless seven and eighth, and Wetland would close it out in the ninth. Werner goes, pitch to Cano as a strike. 
two hits the Yankees have had, and really, not to belabor the point, one legitimate one. And that was the Teixeira double. The Colin Curtis double was a, a pop-up to second that was lost in the twilight. That's an impressive performance against this lineup. Mm -hmm. Well, we figured going in, it certainly what Felix Hernandez has done in this season and also last year, but he is that kind of pitcher. And this should do it. Brandon flips to Hernandez, and Hernandez pitches a two hit shutout of the New York Yankees. He has to feel pretty good about things. He picks up his sixth win of the year, and he follows Cliff Lee's complete game with one of his own. In the ninth, no runs, no hits, no errors, and one man left on base. And the Yankees have lost two in a row here to open up this homestand. Big day for Saunders with two home runs. And an even bigger day for Felix Hernandez, a two-hit shutout. So the Mariners have won this series, and the Yankees will try to salvage the final game tomorrow. There's a lot coming up. Stay right here on Yes.